the, guys, when you think a Pokemon is broken, I'm gonna explain to you the reason why Mewtwo Y is broken and something like Zacian is not broken. Mewtwo Y's mirror win rate. This is the win rate where you have Mewtwo Y on your team and the enemy doesn't. So if you have the Mewtwo Y and the enemy don't, you win 63% of the time versus just having a win rate of 54%, right? Zacian has a 54 win percent, 55 on the mirror. That's not a big deal. Is it broken? No, it's not broken. It's just a really strong. Let's walk through a tier list of the current meta right now. I'm going to go through with S tier right through to D tier, and I'm including a little bit of an A plus here, just because there are some Pokemon that kind of fit between this S and the A tier, and they kind of should be in their own little bracket there. So I'm going to call that one A plus. And not quite S, but you know, they're, they're more deserving and better of the A people. Now we're going to start off with Absol. Absol, I still think, is a pretty bad spot. I'm going to put Absol at D tier. It's just way too much CC, uh, way too much stuff that can just get in the way of Absol. So, not a fan. Um, Aegislash, Aegislash, I'm going to put a C tier, right? This makes me sad because I'm actually a very big Aegislash fan. I've loved Aegislash for a very long time. But unfortunately, in the current meta, unless if you're well supported, Aegislash, you're probably not going to cut the mustard. Okay, Nine Tails, I'm going to put Nine Tails in A. Uh, Nine Tails, still a really good pick. Comes online early. Um, you've got to maneuver the Pokemon well late game, so you've got to understand where you can stand and what corridors you want to be casting your skills in. Um, not A+, plus, not S, just probably a really solid A pick right now, in my opinion. Uh, Azumarill, honestly, is sneakily pretty good. I'm going to slot Azzy in that A tier. Azumarill is doing some pretty good things. Uh, the only downside with Azumarill is that um, you've got to be fighting people one-on-one -on -one to get those crits. So in lane can do some amazing things, but if you're versing people who know how to, I guess, deal with you as an Azumarill, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, Blastoise, I'm also going to put an A tier, uh, just because Blastoise, yes, comes online at level nine with the with the evolution, but it's still really good early as well. Um, you know, helps your laning partner, uh, you know, secure with the water gun pushes and the skull bash stuns and all that stuff so uh honestly solid pick um yeah definitely not the best uh blaziken honestly blaziken is c tier c tier blaziken uh not d because i think that this pokemon still has quite a bit of untapped potential but yeah uh blissey is s tier blissey is supporting so well i feel like people have finally got around a safeguard in this stun meta to you know help their carry do what they need to do. Blissey's always been a really strong pick, and ever since Mewtwo Y, it's like people have almost remembered that Blissey exists. Um, now, I'm going to make the same comment for this Pokemon right here, which is Zacian. Zacian is S tier, man. Zacian has always been S tier. People just forgot about this Pokemon. Right? Does incredible things. Honestly, I'm a big fan of Zacian. Uh, Buzzwall, I'm going to put Buzzwall in. Probably A tier, like it's you know it's not amazing, it's not it's not the best, but you know it's it, it's it's okay. Uh, Chandelure as well, honestly, Chandelure is probably A tier. You know the more Pokemon I put in A tier, I think I'm gonna put Nine Tails in A plus. I'm gonna slot Nine Tails in A plus. Ah uh, yeah, Chandelure A tier. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think you know it's it's still good. It still does pretty well. The new item, the anti healing item, is pretty good on Chandelure, but it's yeah it's. Just compared to the early laning phase, the likes of something like a Nine Tails, I just think it slots into an A. Uh, Charizard is B. Charizard, honestly, not bad. I think, though, you need to use Flamethrower and Flare Blitz because you need to get that Unite move off. Okay, there's too much Unstoppable. There's too much stuff that can cancel the Unite move. So, um, definitely B tier. Uh, Cinderace, maybe C, Borderline D tier. Cinderace, just... Whatever Cinderace does, Mewtwo Wide does it 10 times better. So, that's just the comment there. Uh, Clefable, probably B tier. Uh, supporters are really good, but Clefable is probably arguably the worst supporter at the moment, especially with the anti-healing item. Those ticks of the Moonblast healing are just not going to really be um, doing anywhere near the amount that it should be. So I'm going to slot that right there. Uh, Comfey, Comfey, I'm going to put in B tier as well. Comfey is definitely not the best supporter right now. Um, 
you've got to concentrate pretty hard when you're using Comfey, and if, you know you can't just you know sling on to your teammate anymore. You actually have to think when you're using the Pokemon. And I just think again there are other supporters in the current meta that are doing it better right now. As well as that with Comfey, you don't really have the laning. You're kind of forcing your jungler to gank your lane. Otherwise, like if the jungler comes up and ganks you, you're essentially in a three v one. So. And you don't really want that, right? You want to try and win your lane. So I just think laning with comfort as well is probably not the greatest. So, uh, Cremorant, Cremorant. Mm, oh, yeah. Uh, nah, B. B, 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 B. Still, you know, still good. A lot of fun to use. I love using Cremorant, but that's probably honestly where he slots. Uh, Crustle. This is going to ruffle some feathers, but Crustle's A, plus, man. Crustle's a really solid defender right now. Um, Stealth Rock's a good move. X Sizzle's a good move. Um, Shell Smash, great mobility. Rock Tomb can be annoying. You can use a lot of different movesets depending on whatever team you're versing. Rock this Pokemon with a Focus Band at EXP share, and you're going to be doing incredible things in lane. You can stun them early with that skill, whatever it is, Rock Slide or something. Um, I think Cross was a really solid pick. Evolves level 4. I, th I think Cross was a really good Pokemon. Uh, Decidueye is C tier. Decidueye is just not it at the moment unfortunately and again these are pokemon that i really really like using so i haven't been able to use them properly for a long time just because if i use them i'm just at such a disadvantage just because of the current state of the meta right now uh delphox a plus tier delphox is an insanely good pick uh, i personally think you need to go uh the mystical fire and the flame charge set because you need that mobility i think if you're going to support Delphox, you're not really using this Pokemon to the full potential, but of course it depends on the team composition. Dodrio is S tier. Dodrio is slept on right now. It is carving up. That CC into Mewtwo Y is incredible. You can... I'm just going to leave it there. S tier. Our most complex Pokemon to play by far, but if you learn to play this Pokemon, you can do some really, really solid things. Uh, Dragapult is the tier Dragapult sucks right now, especially the Mewtwo Y and the Mewtwo X. It just sucks, unfortunately. So, uh, that that's yeah, that, that's what there really is to that Pokemon. Same as Duraludon. Like they've nerfed these Pokemon. They've nerfed these range auto hitters, which is good because it takes skill. But the one that they haven't done anything with yet is a Mewtwo Y, which really sucks because all these range auto hitters. They're like B, C, D tier right now. There's really not many of them that can do well. You know, you've got to think about where your positioning is and stuff. But yeah, that, that's that's honestly that's just the current state of it. Uh, Dragonite, honestly, probably B tier. Dragonite still got some good value. Dragonites are really solid all around. The only thing that really lets Dragonite down is a laning phase, right? And it's a lot of investment to put something like Dragonite into mid. So if you can lane well with it, you know, he comes online at level eight. Gets a decent skill at level 5, so, you know, if you play your cards right with an EXP share, he can actually do pretty well in lane, but I just think doesn't cut it for A tier. Uh, Eldegoss is A+, plus. has always been S. Eldegoss has always been S, but unfortunately this new item just bumps him down a little, just makes him a little bit more modest, which is unfortunate. Uh, Espeon... I know people are not going to agree with me here, but Espeon is A plus tier. Espeon outclasses so many Pokemon in the meta, so long as you're using the stored power because you've got to have that mobility. Espeon is an incredible Pokemon. I'm a big, big fan of it. Comes online early. Great Unite move, so long as you use it smartly with Eject Button because you are static. So if you've got something that's casting a Solar Beam on you or something like that, you need to make sure that you're shuffling out of the way. Or you can use it aggressively with the Eject Button, um, which is generally a common play, but just know your matchups when you're doing something like that. Garchomp, S tier. Garchomp, phenomenal kick. Very, very good. Not enough people are using Garchomp right now. Um, both the move sets are good. Earthquake and Dig are amazing, and so is Dragon Rush and Dragon Claw. Really solid pick. Uh, Gardevoir. Gardevoir is probably A tier, right? Can do really well. It's got great uh, pressure. It can poke bushes. It can do some really good stuff. Uh, you probably need to take this Pokemon into jungle. However, it's probably worth the investment. Gengar is probably C tier. Gengar still got it's got a buff, but it's just not. It's just not cutting it. But when you cast those skills. 
Uh, you just, you're just not killing anything quick enough, especially Mewtwo. You can't combo Mewtwo, you combo him down to like 30% health and then he just heals up with a recover or just, just kills you and then gets a lifesteal, so it's just not it. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Uh, Glaceon is... The problem with Glaceon is that he sucks in lane because until he becomes level 6, then he's good. So you've got to put Glaceon into the jungle. There's so many other Pokemon that can do that job way better. So by default, I'm just going to have to bump Glaceon down to B tier. Unless this Pokemon can get a buff or they can like swap this, the level they learn those so skills. Like Ice Call Spear is terrible until you get the second move. Same as Icy Wind, right? So... Nah, B tier, unfortunately. Rudra. Rudra is potentially D tier right now. Rudra's big thing was his healing and his sustain. And now with these items, and honestly, every team is jumping on board with this. Most people in solo queue, there's at least two people using these items. So it makes it really hard to use a self sustain mon um, such as Rudra, right? Uh, Greedon, honestly, Greedon is still a pest. Greedon's really annoying. Um, I'm going to slot him in B tier. You know, he's got the lowest pick rate, but he's still a big chain on the backside. So, but, you know, don't don't think Greedon's a D tier. Greedon's still pretty good. He's just not getting used. Uh, Greninja. Greninja's probably the only auto hitter that fits into B tier, right? The reason why he's not any higher or any lower is because one is skill cap, right? You, you can actually play Greninja a little bit more skillfully than those other characters. Um, but... The reason why he's not high is because smoke screen's great, but there's too much stuff that can still hit you through the smoke screen, right? Which is, you know, it's really not that great. Like, especially after you get hit by the future site, um, you know, with the Mewtwo, it's, yeah, kind of sucks in, in that respect. Uh, Hoopa? Hoopa is... So it depends, right? If we're talking solo queue, probably A+. If we're talking competitive, it's S tier. I'm going to keep Hoopa up in S tier. I think Hoopa is the only supporter that has not been affected at all by the uh, changes to the healing items, right? So stay tuned, I'm gonna explain and give a good Hooper guide, but Hooper is a really, really, really strong pick. Uh, Inteleon is also S, and so is Lapras, okay? These Pokemon up here, they're phenomenal, phenomenal picks, right? S tier, they come online early, they can win their lane, they can do a good job in jungle. Um, the two supporters there are not really affected by those new healing items, so really, really strong picks right now. Um, I'm probably going to cop a bit of slack for this, but Leafeon's A. Leafeon is not as good as people are claiming it to be. Right, definitely A tier. Uh, Lucario as well as A tier. I think if you're pretty good with that power punch close combat, you could probably slot him into A plus tier. No, I'm going to keep him. In, I'm going to keep him A plus. He's really strong. He's a really good pick. Right. Um, you're immune to so much CC. Uh, if you use it well with the eject, you can you can really do some good stuff. So I'm going to keep him right there. Um, a champ. Machamp is A plus tier, very similar to Lucario, however Lucario can just do so much better from level 0 through to 5 because you've got that mobility and that ability and the shoving skill as well, so honestly solid pick. Mamoswine is still C tier, Mamoswine got a buff, but Mamoswine's just not the one that we're all looking for, so I'm going to leave Mamoswine down in that C tier. Um, Mew? is S tier. Mew will always be S tier until he receives like a really bad nerf, right? Mew is the most skill cap character in the game, hands down. There's no arguing with it, right? You can spend 2,000 games playing this Pokemon and you're still improving and you're still learning. So Mew will always be S tier. You just need to figure out a way how to win the game with Mew. It's honestly the only character that can win a Ray fight just because you're a Mew. Just because you can use Solar Beam and Agility if you need to. Or you can use Electro Ball and Light Screen to shove your enemies and then pass it on the Rayquaza. Or you can use your Unite move to save your teammate getting Slowbro altered and then wish out a whole bunch of damage with a huge combo, right? Mew is S tier. Mewtwo Y, I know, uh, sorry, Mewtwo X. Mewtwo X, I know, has got this like really bad win rate and everyone thinks he sucks. Still really good. Still really, really strong pick, okay? A well supported Mewtwo X, still a really good pick. In my, in my opinion, I do not think, like, do not be deceived by that win rate. Uh, Mewtwo Y, unfortunately, is still just super busted, right? It is the only auto attacker that doesn't require any sort of skill thinking whatsoever that's up here. Please, for the love of God, let's do something about this. Um, Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime is B tier. Mr. Mime is fun. Mr. Mime 
can do pretty well in lane, but there's just a little bit too much dashing that can go through your walls. And Power Swap, I think, just needs a little bit of a buff to the healing it does to your teammates. Pikachu is A plus tier simply because it's probably the only attacker that you can put an EXP share on and do phenomenal things. Right? Just because you don't care if you're level 13 by the Ray fight, unless if you're going yeah, like unless if you really want that extra cooldown on Vault Tackle. So I'm sort of an A plus. I think Pikachu is a really, really solid pick, especially in solo queue. Sableye is still C tier. I know people love Sableye and people get really annoyed when I say Sableye is bad. Guys, Sableye is I'm is very rare I see a Sableye that can do its job properly. Uh Sizzle, I'm honestly gonna put Sizzle in C tier. I just don't think Sizzle cuts it. I think I think the anti-healing items on Sizzle is really not that great. Um unless if you really combo as Unite move well. Um, in which case, you might as well be using Scyther, which I think... Scyther is the ultimate highlight reel mom. It's like you can do these awesome dashes and pick up these KOs and get this cooldown reduction and pop his ult and, you know, jump from one thing to the other and just do this, like, these sick plays, right? Um, but in saying that, it's really, really hard to use. So, honestly, I'm probably going to put him in A tier. Uh, same with Zora Arc. I'm going to put Zora Arc in... Uh, sorry, A plus tier. Same as Zora Arc. Um, this is under the assumption you know how to play these Pokemon. Really, really hard picks. These require a lot of skill, a lot of time spent in practice mode to really master those skills. Uh, and as well as that, I believe there is some uh, animation cancelling as well that goes on with some of these really top players who make them look good. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Slowbro is probably the only tank that fits into S tier other than the uh, Lapras. Right, um, really strong. Wins lane, Surf or Skull, depending on your matchup. You don't really have to change your build. Uh, amazing Unite move, especially for end game. Um, yeah, I think Slowbro is a really solid pick. I think Slowbro is definitely S tier, right? Especially Solo Q, like really, really solid pick. Snorlax, honestly, honestly, Snorlax is fun, but Snorlax, I just think Snorlax is. Oh. I love playing Snorlax, but I never win. And that's not a coincidence. It's just because the character doesn't bring the value to the table. So, um, someone had to say it, and it's right there. Sylveon, I think, is B tier. Okay. Sylveon, I think, is B tier. Maybe potentially A tier, but I'm going to slot in B tier. Just because you're a little too static when you're using Hyper Voice, and the Mystical Fire and um, Training Kiss set has been, you know, kind of implicitly nerfed with the uh, anti healing. So, we're going to probably keep. Uh, Sylveon right there. Uh, Talonflame. Talonflame is like this coolest Pokemon to use in solo queue when you're versing scrubs. Right? Like it can clean up, it can do huge damage. But if you're versing people who know how to anticipate your skills, know what you're up to, they've got the awareness so they can kind of get an idea about where you're floating, uh, you're not going to have fun. Okay, I personally don't really ever have a problem when I verse Talonflame for that exact reason. If you've got that map awareness and you can anticipate when that big skill is coming in, the Brave Bird and the Fly get you into the fight. Uh, and then once you're in and you're not doing anything or if the enemies anticipate your arrival into the fight, you're kind of screwed, right? So you can do some big burst damage, but it just doesn't do enough burst damage. Uh, next up, we got Trev. Trev is solid. Honestly, Trev is A+. Plus. I Phenomenal tank pick. Play this Pokemon with an experience, share, and a focus band. Okay, uh, Serena. Serena is, yes, Serena got a buff. Yes, Serena is skill cap, but Serena's just not good enough, guys. If you, like, let's say you pick Serena and you're up against a Slowbro and an Umbreon. Umbreon, who is S tier, by the way. If you're up against a Slowbro and an Umbreon, you are not going to have fun because they're going to be able to zone you while this Pokemon right here, Mewtwo Y, or this Pokemon here, Inteleon, they can just smash you from range. They absolutely smash you from range. So just like, honestly, it can be a phenomenal, but if you're up against a bad matchup, there's really not a whole lot you can do. Unless you sit in the bush and try to be the Ultra Assassin, I just don't think uh, Serena cuts it. Dranatar is C tier. Guys, Tyranitar, yes, it can be a highlight reel. Oh, I got a Penta with Tyranitar. It's level 9. If you don't let the Pokemon come online, it's not going to really do a whole lot against you. Uh, Urshifu. Urshifu Water, the Water Bear, is definitely A plus tier. I uh, can do some really, really solid things. But yeah, 
Definitely A plus tier. I probably wouldn't quite slot in an S tier. Uh, yeah, that's honestly Dark and Water Bear, I think are the same opinion there. They're solid, solid, strong picks, um, but they're definitely not S tier picks. Uh, Venusaur is definitely A plus as well, right? This is the Solar Beam set, not the Petal Dance set. Very, very strong. Uh, Wigglytuff is D tier. Those skills, they probably will help you in lane, but late game, what are you going to do? Sing and the enemy just walks out of it or they pop a full heal or they like, yeah, there's too much invincible. There's too much unstoppable. Not a huge fan of Wigglytuff, unfortunately, because I used to really love using Wigglytuff. Uh, and last but not least, Zero Aura. I know Zero Aura gets hyped up and Zero Aura can do this and that and the next thing. It's probably the only Pokemon that can purely assassinate a Mewtwo Y with a combo. Um, however, other than that, you, it's you're a, you're going in there to kill the Mewtwo Y, and then you die as well. So I'm gonna leave Zero Aura right there. So this is, in my opinion, the current meta at the moment. Now let's have a look at some data to back this tier list up. Umbreon's a great conversation to have here. You can see Foul Play and Snarl are really really good. Um, same as yeah, Snarl is just the move, right? Uh, generally, I'd be using this Pokemon with a, with a, what do you call, eject button. Eject button seems to be winning the games. Um, definitely very balanced. That overall and the mirror win rate are pretty much the same. So it doesn't matter whether you have an Umbreon on your team or not. It's it's, it's going to help you win games and it's not unfair. Okay, Blaziken, as you can see, is a really, really bad pick. Right, this oh, should, probably should be D tier, right? You win 43% of the time. But if your team has one and the enemy team doesn't have one, you win 41% of the time. And otherwise, that sucks. That sucks. So if you see the enemy have a Blaziken and your team doesn't, you're going to win 60% of the time. So that, like, that that's a fun stat to know. And well, that kind of just explains. It's about time they released a Pokemon that wasn't really broken. Maybe because this character is, it, it requires a lot of skill, but I just think it's a little bit too frail uh, for or an all-arounder in my opinion, or at least it feels that way. Maybe people just haven't figured out how to support it properly yet, I'm not sure. Uh, if we have a look at something like Azumarill. Azumarill has got a roughly 50 win percent, which is not bad. Uh, and the set is Water Pulse Aquatel, seems to be doing the most damage with a an X attack. That's interesting. That's interesting. So Azumarill can do pretty good. Uh, Garchomp, Garchomp's a big one, right? S tier Garchomp. Pokemon has got 51 win rate and these two builds this build's got a better win rate right uh, dig an earthquake uh, with uh, x speed x speed right however if you're going dragon rush dragon claw make sure you change that battle item to be uh not an x speed because it, it decreases that win rate right now i know a lot of people say well you know don't take win rate with everything and blah 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 right guys this is we're talking about at scale how many thousands of games get played by this particular character the law of large numbers apply here, right? Uh, I guess the only argument you can make is that, oh, there's a bunch of, you know, people who suck play that character and, the, you know, no good players are using that Pokemon, right? Which, I mean, even still, generally, the people who suck get paired against the people who suck, generally, and you might go, well, they're on my team, but generally speaking, the people who aren't very good get people get paired against people who aren't very good and they play against each other even still, if one of them uses Garchomp and they win, generally that means that Pokemon's a better pick. So these win rates do, uh, they do mean something, right? So people say they're meaningless. It's, that's entirely false, right? Uh, Inteleon, let's have a look at Inteleon, right? Do a really strong win rate. And the reason that is because this Pokemon wins lane. Uh, Snipe Shot with a Fell Stinger and Acrobatics with Liquidation seems to be doing pretty good stuff and working an Eject Button on. That seems to be the battle item that does, that does the work. Uh, uh, where's the pick I want to have a look at? Uh, the Pokemon I want to have a look at is Crustle. Crustle is really solid, right? And this is the moveset I actually like a lot. Here is Shell Smash and Stealth Rock. This Pokemon plays like a traditional defender if you use this set. Uh, honestly, I think if you practice using this, probably not with a fluffy tail. I don't know what the battle item is. I've been playing around with Golgetta. Okay, I know that's kind of troll. It's kind of cringe, but I, I just think like you don't need an X speed. I don't think a potion helps. An X attack is point. Listen, the eject button really doesn't do anything because you've got the mobility anyway. Honestly, Fluffy Tail probably makes the most sense because it helps with a flip, helps secure that objective. 
Helps rip the objective. Helps secure the farm. Helps you farm quicker. I just think Goal Getter helps you score quicker as well. So there's kind of like an argument for both. Anyway, let's not get too caught up in a quick rate of 5%, right? Uh, X Scissor is definitely a move that does really, really well. So definitely don't sleep on that regardless if you go Rock Tomb or Shell Smash. Uh, Pikachu, let's have a look at Pikachu. You've got a very, very high pick rate. Can do some really good things. I like this move set of Thunder, Thunderbolt with the Eject or the X Speed. That's the build that I generally go for. Uh, it's not bad, it's about 50 win rate. Pokemon's really solid. Really, really solid. Uh, let's have a look at Nine Tails. Where's Nine Tails? I know this Pokemon's win rate has actually dropped quite a bit. Where is Nine? Uh, this Pokemon win rate dropped quite a bit. 47%. Um, I honestly, I, I can't really tell you why. I still think it's really solid. Yeah, 47 win percent, but I still think this Pokemon's really solid. Okay, Zaishi and the Pokemon are slept on a big time, right? Sacred Sword Agility. This guys, this moveset has always been good. It's always been good. The, the reason why Zacian is extra good as well is because you can take it into lane. It's got phenomenal secure. It can fight really well. And you you use your money to help you win the fights with the gank rather than putting the score into the top lane. Because generally your team will come up and score at top lane unless you're stacking. Really good anti-stacker as well because that Sacred Sword's AOE. So you can, you can defend really well with it. I don't think it's a really good Pokemon. It's a really, really solid Pokemon. Plus, they fixed the bug with it as well, which is nice. All right, Mamoswine. Mamoswine. Mamoswine's win rate is going up quite a bit. Uh, okay, that's... Ice School Crash Earthquake, 53 win rate. Let the Eject make it 56. It's got a low pick rate. I wonder why. It's got a really low pick rate. What is that? 5%? Yeah. Maybe I need to try this. With an eject, Ice School Crash Earthquake. That's the move set I used to use when I use Mamoswine. Even Ice School Crash High Horsepower does a good job. Maybe this Pokemon does a lot better at defending a lane than I think. Maybe I need to reconsider Mamoswine as a traditional defender. I'm having an epiphany right now. This is weird. Our uh, Leafeon overrated, as in my opinion. Still 49 win rate, still really good. Honestly, probably the only speedster I'd use. A lot of people like that Solar Blade. You've got that range secure. I'm still a big fan of Raise Leaf and uh, Leaf Blade. I still think that's a really good set. But just bottom line, don't pick Aerial Ace when you're using. Right? I can't believe that I've got a Pokemon with this much of a difference in the win rate purely based on the one skill. You know the other Pokemon that's like that? It's Lapras. Lapras Ice Beam is like, that, that's the win rate, man. Parasong Ice Beam is really, really strong. Lapras is such a good Pokemon as well. So really, really solid pick, right? Um, Parasong Ice Beam is really good. The same as Water Pulse Ice Beam as well. Water Pulse Bubble Beam is pretty solid. Um, I'd be using Lapras with an X Speed. Okay, let's have a look. What, what else is high up here? Oh, yeah, Dodrio, Dodrio. Let's have a look at Dodrio. So I think Dodrio's S tier does really well. Look at 51, almost 52 win rate. The drill peg jump kick is definitely the set that does good. Look at this. Jump kick try attack 58 win percent. And it's someone's there's someone running this with a chin injured all and they just keep winning. There's 76 win percent. Probably someone in a five stack who's just doing really good things with this. That's weird. A chin injured all but jump kick. Maybe they have all the hoop ball? I don't know. It's kind of cool though. Yeah, really solid pick. I'm a fan. Uh, Mewtwo Y. Mewtwo Y. Where is Mewtwo Y? There it is. Uh, the win rate's still disgusting. The mirror is still very disgusting. I'm like, I'm, I'm surprised this Pokemon is still not nerfed yet. The, guys, when you think a Pokemon is broken, I'm gonna explain to you the reason why Mewtwo Y is broken and something like Zacian is not broken. Mewtwo Y's mirror win rate. This is the win rate where you have Mewtwo Y on your team and the enemy doesn't. So if you have the Mewtwo Y and the enemy don't, you win 63% of the time versus just having a win rate of 54%, right? So the mirror is what makes a Pokemon, in my opinion, broken, right? Pokemon are good with their overall win percent, but what breaks the game? When people say, oh, this is broken, it's like, no, it's not broken, right? I'll give you an example. Zacian is not broken. Zacian has a 54 win percent, 55 on the mirror. That's not a big deal. Is it broken? No, it's not broken. It's just a really strong pick, right? It doesn't matter if you have one on your team. 
you don't have on your on your team, right? It's it's purely based on that skill, right? There are other Pokemon that do the job well, do the role similar, but it can be replaced with something else that can, you know, do a similar job of that. Maybe like a well-played Lapras or a well-played Lachario potentially can do a similar job to or like an Urshfu or something like that. Okay. Uh, where's another strong pick? Like, yeah, Lapras. Lapras is another strong pick. Well, oh, yeah, Inteleon, right? 51 51. Everyone says Inteleon's broken. It's not broken. Uh, Lapras. 52 and 53, right? That's not broken. It's just a good pick. But then when you look at something like Blissey, 54 57, like that is only because of Mewtwo Y. Right, it's only because of Mewtwo Y. And by the way, it's Helping Hand and Safeguard is definitely the item build uh, with an X speed. I even use uh, yellow emblems on this Pokemon. I think that does a job really, really well too. But it's that it's that difference. It's that difference in the in the overall Wimp sent to the mirror. That's what makes it absolutely gross. Okay, and probably last Pokemon I'm gonna have a look at is uh, Snorlax. Oh, Snorlax. Oh, Yawn Heavy Slam has a 50 win rate, 51 win rate. That's weird. I thought block would be a much better move. Clearly not. Yawn Heavy Slam. Okay, if you're going lax, that's the set you want to use. Generally, just don't use Flail if you're using Snorlax. Flail sucks. Look at that. 45, 44 win rate. That's that's terrible. With it's the lowest pick rate I think we've almost ever seen. Oh no, there was one week where it was lower. Yeah, so Snorlax. Uh, pick rate is dropping right off as well. But maybe, guys, Yuan might be the move set that, you know, does pretty well.